Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to show you how I add terminals to the ends of heavy duty wire. So the first step is to just identify the size of the wire that you've got. So let me show you this wire that I'm working with. This is actually kind of an interesting wire. It came shipped from the factory like this. This goes to my inverter that I'm using in my camper van setup. So uh, I don't know why the company did it like this. I guess they're probably trying to save money, but what they've done is they've taken two wires. These are four gauge wires and they've joined them to a single terminal on one end, but then left the other ends kind of bare like this so you can connect them to whatever you want. So the first thing we got to do is identify sort of the cross nominal cross-sectional area of the cable. So since I've got two of these, you can see the amount of cross-sectional area of these two four gauge wires put together. Um, I think it's about, I did the calculation, it's about 0.0656 inches squared, which is about the same cross-sectional area as a one gauge wire. Uh, so this wire should theoretically be able to do about 130 amps. So now that we know that this is about the cross-sectional area of a one gauge wire, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go get yourself a bare lug or a terminal, which is appropriately sized. Now in this case, this is actually a three aught connector. So it's bigger than it needs to be by, by quite a bit. But one reason is because I've got these two sets of wires, which are not all joined together nicely, like a single one gauge wire would be. If I just had a single one gauge wire, I should go buy a terminal which matches for a single one gauge wire. But since I've got this kind of Frankenstein combination, I'm going to use a slightly bigger terminal so it's easier to get the wires in, okay? So once you do that, next thing we're going to do is we're going to strip off a good bit of uh, the jacket on the wire and I'm going to test fit this. So maybe let me just kind of clean up some of these loose wires on the end of it. And let's just test to make sure that it will fit inside my terminal. Okay, so it does. There it goes. So it fits and you can see I leave a little bit of space on the end. Um, this might be more than some other people are happy with, but I like to do it this way and I'll show you why in a second. So now that we've got the wire all set, let's go ahead and get the crimping tool so we can actually first crimp this lug or this ter ring terminal onto the wire. All right, so I've got the crimping tool here and I've got the appropriate size dies. So these crimping dies, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the, uh, the size of the crimping die matches the size of the lug, all right, or the terminal that you're trying to match. So in this case, um, I'm gonna use these dies, which are actually a tiny bit smaller than are advertised to, or are spec. But again, that's because the wire inside is a little bit smaller than um, it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna to need to crush this lug or crimp this uh, lug a little bit tighter than necessary. Necessary. So let's go ahead and put the uh, the dies in the crimping tool. Okay. Tighten this guy up. Okay. And now all we need to do is open up the tool and work this in. Oops. Okay, and then I'm gonna start compressing to crimp it. And actually, before I do, if I do that, let me show you just to, so we're all on the same page. As you can see right now, the lug, it's nice, uh, here on the collar, right? It's nice and circular. We're just gonna crimp it down to this uh, polygon shape using the crimping tool. So, all right, let me go ahead and give that a crimp and we'll be back in a second. All right, so we finished with the first crimp, and as you can see, what it's done is it's basically uh, smashed the lug down around the wires. Um, now, again, because these wires are not exactly, they're a little bit too small, this lug is too big for it, it's, it's actually not very tight right now. So I'm actually gonna crimp it again one more time down here uh, to make it hold a little bit better. All right, so next what I wanna do is I wanna actually solder in the wire into the terminal. So, um, uh, you could try to use a normal soldering iron, but given the volume and the size of this lug, this is gonna take absolutely forever. So don't use a soldering iron. Instead, what I'm gonna use is, is basically, I'm gonna get a map gas torch, and let's just heat up the entire lug with the torch, and then just feed in the solder. And you'll see that this works actually amazingly well, and it goes very, very quickly.
All right, so here we are. It's cooled down now, and as you can see, that terminal is on super tight now. This is perfect. Um, so uh, at this point, I guess uh, if you have some heat shrink, you could try to stick it on. I don't have heat shrink that's big enough or thick enough for this wire, so I'm just going to wrap the ends with a little bit of electrical tape to kind of clear up some of this bare wire here and just make it so the copper isn't as exposed all the way up, and I think we'll be pretty close. All right, so here you have it, the finished product. I think this is great. I've got now terminals on both ends of this heavy duty battery cable, so I can go ahead and now install this for my application. So uh, with that being said, I think this is a great spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you scroll down a little ways and just click on that subscribe button, it really does help me uh, continue making these videos. And remember, these new videos come out every Monday, so I hope you'll join me once a week where we can both learn something new together. So uh, with that being said, I hope I'll catch you at one of these future discussions. And until then, I think I'll sign off for now. Talk to you later. Bye.